In this exercise, I'm going to create a brand new project. So here I'll click on New Project, and I'm going to select the Systems template. Click on OK. I want to concentrate on the HVAC and the mechanical panels from the ribbon. I've dragged them into the drawing area for clarity. Rather than starting at the very beginning, I'm going to start with the duct placeholder. Notice that when I select the tool, the contextual tab changes and gives me some options. This tells me that it will automatically connect to another element. I can select it to inherit the elevation or inherit the size of other objects that I connect to. I can also select Tag on Placement. The Duct Placeholder tool, although it has properties, we can see here that we have oval, rectangular, and round duct. It has specified widths and height, and an offset from the current level that I'm working on. But when I draw this duct, it draws it as a single line. Let's compare this to the duct tool. I click on the duct. We have the same width, height, and offset. And I'm going to follow the path of the placeholder duct. If I zoom in, the first thing that we can see is that the duct that I created has some fittings, while the placeholder duct does not. But essentially, they look very, very similar. Let's see what happens when I change the level of detail from coarse to medium. The duct changes to a double line duct, while the placeholder duct remains as a single line. Looking at this in 3D using the default 3D view gives us the same result. Both look single line until I change this view from coarse level of detail to medium. I can select the placeholder duct run and convert this placeholder using the convert placeholder tool to a full double line duct. Once this process is done, however, you can't revert back to placeholder. I'll undo that last command because I want to indicate that on the placeholder ducts, I can still use the duct sizing tools. These ducts are still part of systems. Here we have a system type of supply air. The biggest difference between this and the full size duct is the full size duct I can then start adding insulation or lining to. So the placeholder duct is ideal at conceptual design. So running through the rest of the tools on this tab, we have duct fittings. And as you can see here, we've got elbows, T's, Y's, crosses, and other types of fittings. So here's a duct fitting. I can create duct accessories. From the properties palette, here we've got a control damper. And if I go and place it, and to place this object, I'll go back to my plan view. And as I place this over the top of a duct, once it's placed, it will actually cut into the duct. I can convert a full size duct to a flex duct. I can draw flex duct. Here we've got the diameter and the offset, and it will connect onto the duct. I can place air terminals. Here we have a supply diffuser. We have extract grills, return diffusers, or I can load a family from my library. I can also place mechanical equipment. Again, from the type selector, I can choose the type of element that I want to place. Finally, on these panels is the arrow here that takes us to mechanical settings. 
In the mechanical settings dialog, I can select whether MEP hidden lines are drawn, what the line style is, and I can look at duct settings. I can select the system type, the duct type, and its default offset. This goes for branches. And I can also look at the sizes that we use for ducts.